Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, December 2nd, 2019. What's going on? How are ya? December 2nd, everybody. It's official. Get your Christmas lights up, because it's the holiday season. Dooby dooby doo. You know, it's funny. They don't even have to do those fucking stories anymore of like, it is absolute pandemonium down here at the mall. There are no parking spots. People are screaming and they're trying to grab the last micronauts. Remember micronauts? <coughs> they don't have to do that anymore, right? Because everybody just orders from Amazon. Okay, and if you think Santa's elves or overworked. I don't remember the last time a Santa elf got crushed to death by a forklift. Here's the thing, everybody. Why don't you think about all of these poor people who have to work like double time, 14-hour shifts, whatever the fuck it is they're doing over at that goddamn hardware store. You know, go to the mall. Huh? Just get in the SUV that you didn't need. Go down to the fucking mall. Buy the shit you don't want. Give it to the people you don't like. So some of these people over there at Amazon, you know, could give their lower backs a break for a second. Jesus, what a fucking slave driver that guy must be. Alleged. An alleged slave driver. I don't know. I don't remember the last time a slave got benefits. <laughs> Next question. Have you ever been to Epstein's Island? Make sure she accidentally chokes to death in the next 24 hours. Thank you. Um, anyway, so that's the deal. I'm an asshole. I still drive around and I go to toy stores. That's my, that's my big fucking move. It's actually, you know, it's finally paid off after doing it for half a fucking century. That's not true because I got my driver's license at 60 and I'm 51 for 35 years. 35 years. I've been driving down to the fucking malls, you know, December 2nd. Everybody just sits at home clicking on this. Stupid bills driving down to the fucking stores. I just don't, I don't know. I can't, there's like. The, the internet, it's fucking overwhelming to me. So I just stay, I stay on like three different sites. I go to YouTube, I do the Twitter, I do the Instagram, and uh, I think that's my world. Oh, and then I do Google News when I run out of shit to talk about here on the podcast. Other than that, I stay away from it. That's not true. I go to StubHub, right? I go to the MotoGP, and then I go to the four major sports websites. I do that. All right, whatever. It's still... I was born in a small town. I can breathe in a small town. So, yeah, I got I to gotta start my Christmas shopping, but I am up to my fucking neck. I turned the corner on this fucking exam. I've been studying my ass off, trying to watch some fucking football. I did watch Ohio State versus Michigan. Started off great. Michigan scored first. Hail to the victors. Ah, we missed the extra point. You know, there's a lot of people out there calling for Jim Harbaugh's head, and uh, I I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't think that's right. You're talking about a guy, he brought an NFL team to a Super Bowl. You're talking about a guy, he saved what what Michigan fans, he saved that fucking program there. Where that program was, okay, he's still paying for it. That's what I think. I think that, that Michigan football program was so in the fucking toilet it has affected Jim Harbaugh's uh, ability to recruit. Because if you looked at the offensive line of Ohio State, they outweighed Michigan by like fucking 50 pounds a guy. That's why they were running the ball down their fucking throats. I mean, what are you supposed to do at that point? Roids. Um, so, I don't know. Okay, so you're going to get rid of him. Who are you going to replace him with? Anybody. It was a lot of emotion. It was a lot of emotion. Um. But I don't, I don't fucking understand how Ohio State became ranked number one when LSU beat number one Alabama in Alabama to become number one. LSU didn't lose. And Ohio State, what, they, they fucking, they beat an overrated Penn State team and then they become number one? Fucking ridiculous. I don't know. 
I'm just glad Alabama lost again. Not really. I kind of miss rooting against them. But um, I don't know. How many times are they going to throw Ohio State into the fucking Final Four just to watch them get fucking shut out and get their asses kicked? I don't understand what it is these people have over the fucking NCAA. And these fucking Buckeye fans, all they do is bitch, moan, and complain if they don't fucking get in there. I don't know what's going on. Every year they put the boring ass Buckeye. Let me see when the last time they fuck it. They, they won it once this this decade, right? Let's see, Ohio State playoff record. Oh, it's not. No, no, no. Football, football. Remember that, that, that one fucking year? They they shouldn't even they didn't even fucking win the Big Ten and they got in and then they got fucking shut out. Let's look at the powerhouses in their division. Rutgers, Maryland, Michigan State, Indiana. I mean, get the fuck out of here. They're the number one team in the country. I'm not saying they're not good, but it's just, it's fucking annoying as an LSU fan to see your team not lose, knock off. We actually knocked off a number one. Who the fuck did Ohio State beat? Will Jim Harbaugh ever beat Ohio State? My goodness. It's, it's, it's going. Anyways, all right. The Bruins. Oh, LSU won. No one gives a fuck, right? They fucking, they, they beat, uh, who they beat? Texas A&M by like fucking 90 points. Is that enough to make us go up and over? Um, I guess when Ohio State scores 70 points on Maryland, that, that's enough to make them the number one fucking team in the country. Um... Combining that with a win over mighty Penn State, get the fuck out of here. I can't wait to watch them lose in the playoffs. That's really going to make me happy. Fuck it. You know, they're like the fucking rich kids, even though they're a state school. Every fucking year, those cunts are in it. How the fuck did they get to be number one? It's fucking beyond me. Maybe this is why they do it, so you fucking lose your shit. It's making me hate Ohio State, and I don't hate Ohio State, but now I do. Um, Bruins! Beat the hated Habs once again. Beat them once again. After going down one nothing on a, a wild deflection of the first period. No goals for the next fucking 40 minutes. And the Bruins explode in the third period. You see Pasternak's fucking goal? Absolute fucking rocket. Nothing Carey Price could do about it. Top shelf. Making it one to one. You know who was it? Back has scored next. I actually watched the game. I had a great fucking time. I missed the Celtics, but they played the Knicks. I know that they won. Even though Marcus Smart hurt his oblique. Um and then your New England Patriots. What ba 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 boo uh, too little, too late against the Texans. Even that last touchdown, I mean, they were just going into a prevent to help chew up the fucking clock. But um, I don't know. Tom Brady doesn't have anybody to throw to. Somebody on the New England Patriots receiving court needs to step up and be a definitive number two so Edelman can get open and not be double covered every fucking second of the game. Um, you know, they got to start getting first downs because what's happening is as great as our defense is, they spent too much time on the field. Come third, fourth quarter, they're a little tired. There you go. That's my Brady. That's my assessment before everybody says Tom Brady's too fucking old. He is too old to be playing tackle football, but somehow he's doing it. But the man simply does not have anybody to throw to other than Edelman, it seems. Um, the other team knows that, so they just double up Edelman, and then that's that's been the, the fucking problem. Uh, we got some protection issues. Um, we shall see. It's late in the season, but I would never, I would never doubt um, Bill Belichick's ability to turn a team around. But it is getting it's pretty late to have a game like that, from what I've seen during the Belichick era. So uh, we'll see. But as of right now, my picks for the Super Bowl are. Uh, I like the Ravens and I like the Seahawks. Um, I think an amazing matchup in the playoffs would be Kansas City versus uh, the Ravens. And I think defense wins that game, which you got to give the nod to the Ravens. I just think they they got the D, they got the QB, they got the coach. uh, They got a running game. They got a good offensive line. They're looking great. And 
They're, they're fucking tearing through the NFC, beating everybody. Beat the 49ers yesterday, beat the Rams, beat the shit out of the Rams on Monday night, defending uh, Super Bowl runner-ups. Counts for something. I know they're having a tough season. And uh, 49ers get their second loss, so I think that that puts them... Uh, Seattle has two losses. Seattle won... Seattle won their uh, head-to-head against the 49ers, so would they get home field? I don't know. I have a kid. I don't know what's going on anymore. Let me look it up real quick. Where the fuck is it? There, I click on that. There we go. All right, NFL standings. Sneaky Pete Carroll. I think he's the best coach in the NFC. I think they get through. All right, NFL standings. Yep, up, up, doo, 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 doo. All right, Patriots 10 and 2. Only one game ahead of the Buffalo Bills. Uh, they let them hang around. We're going to have to beat them again. The game will be in New England, if I remember correctly. All right. What about the Dolphins? Out of nowhere, they got three fucking victories. They're like, we, we don't, wait, and what are you trying to give us the number one pick in the draft? We don't want that. Give that to the fucking Bengals at 1 and 11. 1 and 11. All right, why won't you give me all the fucking teams? Why can't I get the fucking NFC, you cunts? All right, NFC standings. NFC, UFC, world champion. Jesus Christ, would you look? What the fucking fuck? Oh, my wife's going to get me on that one. What in the fucking... F- I don't get this shit. Why does it keep going to the fucking AFC? Oh, because you click on national... See, this is why I, I don't... I just don't fuck with computers. I type in what I want and it still won't give it, give it to me. You don't realize how fucking pathetic it is that the fucking Cowboys are 6-6 six and six and they're in first place? Do they still make the playoffs? All right. Oh, the Seahawks play tonight. So the Seahawks win tonight, according to my uh, public school math... They are going to be uh, tied with the 49ers having won their head-to-head. And when do these sons of bitches play again? When do they play again? Seattle Seahawks, 17-9 over the Eagles. Seattle Seahawks. Come on, give me your fucking scout. Oh, they just won't give it to me. They will not give it to me. Seahawks player, Russell Wilson. Oh, you motherfucker. Seahawks schedule. Do I got to look this up? Seahawks. Schedule. When do they play the 49ers again? When? Doesn't Siri jump in when you ask the... I swear to fucking Christ. Oh, the last game of the year. Oh, wow. Who do they got left? They got the Vikings tonight. Then they got the Rams. Then they got the Panthers. Then they got the Cardinals. I think that they win the rest. I think they win the rest of their games right to the 49ers, and then we'll see. Then we'll see. Rams are at home. It's a divisional rivalry. Those games are always close. Who knows? Who knows what happens? By the way, you know what I finally saw? The movie I finally saw? I saw The Irishman. Martin Scorsese's The Irishman. Another classic. Started a little slow, and I got worried, and right around 40 minutes in, forget about it. Forget forget about it. Um, I hate how that Johnny Brasco ruined forget about it, because I always grew up saying that. And you get all these hipsters thinking you're quoting that movie. It's like, I'm not quoting the movie. The movie was quoting people I grew up with. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jesus Christ. The performances in that movie. Also, two great stand-up comedians in there. Ray Romano and uh, Sebastian Maniscalco. Both crushed it. Um, I'm not going to talk too much. I don't want to ruin any part of the movie, but I'm trying to think the last time there was a movie with that caliber of actor in it that late in their careers. Um, I did get a little sad in the end where I felt like they were all saying goodbye. Um, Jesus Christ. The amount of screen time De Niro and Pacino share is it's just I have to watch it again. It was so fucking good. Absolutely incredible movie. Um, oh, I just can't. I don't want to ruin it. Dom Dominic Lombardozzi in it crushed it. Um, I got to know him this year doing the, that Pete Davidson movie. Uh, please, please, please sit down and watch that movie. Just give yourself two and a half hours to just sit down and enjoy it. It's absolutely incredible. 
um, I had an amazing weekend. I saw that. I uh, I also went to go see uh, Slayer's last concert. They're retiring. What a way to go out. Two sold-out shows at the L.A. Forum. I believe they were from Orange County. I remember growing up, my... my uh, uh, a couple of my relatives were really into uh, Slayer and all of that shit. And I just couldn't make the leap. I was like, this shit's just too fast. It's too fucking crazy. I couldn't hear it. And it wasn't until you, and they, they used to always bug me. Come on, man. You got to get the second bass drum. You got to play double bass. And I was stuck in my Phil Rudd, John Bonham, single bass drum horse shit. And um, then years later, in the early 2000s, I finally gave in and I bought a fucking double pedal. And um, I started trying to, you know, play some of that Primus shit, who, by the way, was also on the bill. It was it was Phil Anselmo, who I missed. He played such a fast set. I tried to, you know, when I got there, I said hello to some people. I ran out there and I missed the whole thing. I heard it was fucking amazing. Then uh, I saw Ministry. Didn't want to miss that. Al Jurgensen uh, absolutely crushed it. Played my favorite song of this, Stigmata. So I was a happy camper there. And then I saw Primus go out there, fucking destroy it, give Slayer their props. And then Slayer came, came out. They had the flames going, the upside down flame and cross. Um, they, end, they opened with South of Heaven, ended with Angel of Death. And just just watching the drummer, just like, uh, I, only, I honestly think after like, the hardest part of that drumming, you know, someone was saying to me, he goes, he goes, the feet are hard enough, but like the fucking hands just blowing around the toms, the whole fucking set. They just played 90 straight minutes, just snapped your head back and it stayed there for 90 straight minutes. And then they said, good night, no encore, which I thought was the shit. Um, I did feel a little bit sad, you know. I don't know. I always get a little bit melancholy around the uh, the holidays. Anyway, you know, you start seeing people, you know, you usually only see for once a year. They're older. You're older. I watched The Irishman. I felt like they were saying goodbye. I go to see Slayer. He's saying goodbye. And he stood there looking at the crowd. That's really sad look on his face before he waved goodbye. And I was just like, oh, my God. You know, I had a fucking brutal year this year as far as losing a couple of friends. I was just like, all right, I need to go see like 21 pilots now. <laughs> I got to go to a show where there's young people with their whole lives ahead of them and, uh, you know, whatever. But uh, I got it. I got to hand it to the older fans there. I mean, I would I never did this in my life. I've never went to a mosh pit in my fucking life. I was like, that is some stupid shit right there. But it is fun to watch. And there was a nice mosh, mosh pit going. Um, during ministry and uh, got going again, of course, during Slayer. But um, I actually got chills in the end when, when they were saying good night and they were just standing there letting the crowd cheer and the whole crowd started cheering, thank you, Slayer. Thank you, Slayer. It was awesome. And also when we were in the parking lot, it's the Jim Brewer bit. If you never saw Jim Brewer's bit on the Slayer fans climbing over the chairs going, Slayer, Slayer. Is there a climber? You were out in the parking lot. You just heard people going like, Slayer! Fucking Slayer, man! Slayer! <laughs> like, nobody has ever said Slayer. It has to be screamed with a certain level of, of frightening urgency. Slayer! <laughs> um, but anyways, it, it, was a, uh, it was a great time, and I saw nothing but killer drummers all night. I got to stand to the side of the stage and uh, and watch all of them try to figure out what the fuck they were doing. Of course, I couldn't, you know, Tim Alexander, I was trying to watch like, you know, they had all that, the cool uh, video going on behind him. So it was kind of making him in the dark a lot. So I had to wait till the screen lit up so I could try to peek at his, his uh, bass drum work. But uh, they're just fucking incredible, man. Every band that night was incredible. So I hope you were there. I hope you got a chance at least to see, check out that, line up on that tour because I, I believe um, that was the last night for all of them. Not forever. I think they all Primus and all them break off and do their own shit after this. Um, all right. With that, let me... Uh, you know what's funny is I went home the next day, right? I was home the next day and I tried to play South of Heaven, which I used to be able to keep up with. 
You just can't do it, man. It's like fucking taking time off from the gym. All right. Tipsy elves, everybody. All right. It's officially the holiday season. Woe be doo be boo. And no party is complete without getting your ultra festive holiday clothing from Tipsy Elves. Tipsy Elves is one is a one stop shop for all your holiday clothing needs. Oh man, I saw this guy at Slayer. He had a Slayer Christmas sweater on with six 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 knitted in like only a, an evil mother can do. <laughs> Um, anyway, they sell one of a kind Christmas sweaters, dresses, family pajamas, and onesies that will transform your holiday party into an unforgettable experience. You will be the life of the party. Reveal your hilarious holiday alter ego and score bragging rights for having the best Christmas sweater at the party. Talk about your tipsy elves sweater and other products you saw on the website. Well, all right. I guess I got to go to the website. Yeah, da 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 dee dee dee. I'm gonna, I'm really gonna look up tipsy elves. Like, I'm gonna get put on some sort of fucking watch list. You never did anything creepy? Then why were you trying to take, uh, why were you looking up drunk elves? Oh wow, yeah, these are definitely holidays. You miss, you drink. Oh, there's a bullseye in the guy's sweater. Get lit on top of a Christmas tree. Wow, they're really promoting getting fucked up on this site, right? Too lit to quit. What's this one say? Santa Claus is coming. Okay, I think I get the tone of this website. All right. Tipsy elves. Okay, they're a little, you know, they're a little drunk. They can't really, you know, say the word no. What's going on over there at that sweater company? All right. Uh, Tipsy elves doesn't just sell Christmas sweaters. <laughs> They also sell roofie pills. I'm kidding. Kidding. They are truly the one-stop shop for all your festival holiday clothing needs. Onesies. Cozy up. Uh, cozy up for movie night in their ultra comfy fleet. You know, I just realized the little people have to wear onesies if they want to wear pajamas. Are they like two? Do they make? Uh, yeah, they do. Because they're like as tall as eight-year-olds. All right. That was a dumb question. Show how much you care about the with festive marching matching pajamas. Jesus, festive matching pajama sets for the whole family. Perfect for that family Christmas photo. T-shirts, hilarious Christmas trees for both men and women, Christmas suits, festive suits and ties for guys looking to kill it at the office party. Dresses slash leggings, adorable holiday dresses and crazy comfortable leggings for all the jingle ladies to show up and slay. Jingle ladies! Um, white elephant gift cards. Tipsy Elephant has done the shopping for you with their all new, carefully curated white elephant gift section. Say snow thank you to boring this year. Oh boy. Try one of the hilarious, awesome, hilariously awesome designs from Tipsy Elves. Go to tipsyelves.com slash bird. T I P S Y Elves, E L V E E L V E S. Dot com slash burr to get 20% off your entire order. That's tipsyelves.com slash burr for 20% off today. Okay, who's next? Oh, Policy Genius. Hey, dude, how'd you get so smart? It's already December. As much as we love uh, getting seasonal, this month can be a bit stressful too. We've all got a long list of things to do for the holidays. If life insurance is one of the things way down your list, Policy Genius might be able to help you cross it off. Oh, life insurance. Yeah, you got to get this stuff, right? What if the tree shorts out and you get fucking zapped sitting there in your tipsy elf onesie? Uh, they'll find the right life insurance at the best price and do all the work to get you covered. Updates available. I don't update anything. Sorry, that fucking thing keeps popping up here. Once you apply, the Policy Genius team, wait, Policy Genius makes finding the right insurance in a breeze. In minutes, you can compare quotes from the top insurance insurers to find your best price. You could save $1,500 or more a year by using Policy Genius to compare life insurance policies. Once you apply, the Policy Genius team 
will handle all the paperwork and red tape. And Policy Genius doesn't just make life insurance easy. They can also help you find the right home and auto insurance or disability insurance. So if you need life insurance but aren't sure where to start, why not start at PolicyGenius.com? It only takes a few minutes to find the right life insurance policy, apply, and cross another thing off your li- your to-do, li- to-do list. Policy Genius, when it comes to life insurance, it's nice to get it right. Oh, and look who's here. Lastly, but certainly not leastly, Stamps.com, the advertisers that started it all. You know what people hate more than anything? Foreigners? Not foreigners. Being bothered with little daily annoyances. You know what I'm talking about? Things like being stuck in traffic, or waiting in line, or just having to do things you don't want to do. Well, guess what? You can get rid of some of those annoyances just by using Stamps.com. You know about Stamps.com. They've been sponsoring this show for over seven years now. And if you haven't tried it, what are you waiting for? The holidays are coming up quickly. Get started with Stamps.com today so that you... Ah, So you're ready for the holiday rush. Stamps.com brings all the services of the post office right to your computer. You can buy and print U.S. postage for any letter, any package right from your home office, um, home or office, sorry. You can even pick, you can even schedule a pickup with the mail carrier so you you don't never have to deal with L.A. traffic or at least going to the post office. Um, You haven't even gotten to the best... Oh, I haven't even gotten to the best part yet. With Stamps.com, you get five cents off every first-class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Why would anyone pay full price when they don't have to? Well, maybe you have unlimited funds and you don't give a shit. Other than that, I, 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 I agree with the question. Why would anyone pay full price when they don't have to? Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. It's no wonder over 700,000 small businesses already use Stamps.com. Right now, my listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. That's Stamps.com. Enter Burr. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. You know what? I was watching that Kerry King banging his head while he was playing uh, the original guitarist, one of the original guitarists in Slayer. And uh, that's when I re- knew I was old, when I was watching him and I was actually worried for his health. I was like, Ew. Ew. I heard the lead singer had to get spine surgery from like all the years of like doing that helicopter move. You know, that's why that guy, Chris Slade, one of the many drummers for ACDC, he never had to get spinal surgery because he didn't have that hair to whip around to do the helicopter move. You know? One of the advantages of male pattern baldness. I did think it was weird that the guitarist, Kerry King, right? He fucking, he went bald, he shaved the head so he looked cool, and then he got like male pattern baldness tattoos. Like he tattooed like the horseshoe back onto his head. I don't know. It's like he solved the problem and then he highlighted it. Um, Maybe, I don't know. Like if I was starting a band, that would be a red flag. It's like, okay, this guy faces his problems head on and then he he's free of them before steering directly back into it again. And now it's worse than ever. Um, (laughs) Sorry. Um, Anyway. All right, I'm still not boozing, can't you tell? Can't you tell by the fucking joy in my voice? Oh, my God. I have, it's just my life, everything, food tastes better. (laughs) I got to do some stand-up this week when I'm not fucking studying. I got to get back out there because I I tried to do a couple of stand-up sets last week. I tried and I succeeded. I did do some stand-up, but it was definitely a little bit of work there. So, um... I'm actually going to be doing a, uh, I'm putting together a benefit. Uh, there's, there's a band that I'm a fan of and, uh, one of their, one of their members is going through some, uh, I don't know, some health issues later on in life. So he has a charity. So I'm going to try to put together a show and send the money, um, for that thing. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to do. I try to be a good guy. Do you know me and my wife were watching Wheel of Fortune the other night, right? That's one of the things that we do. We watch Wheel of Fortune, right? You watch Jeopardy, you feel stupid, and then afterwards you watch Wheel of Fortune, you feel really smart. Except if you're me and you have a slight 
some sort of dyslexia or maybe you're just fucking dumb is I can't solve any puzzles. Um, and I, and I actually find the more letters that are up there, the harder it is for me. So anyways, uh, I also thought it was bubbling brook, not babbling. It's bubbling brook. There's bubbles in the brook. A babbling brook would be if the, the, the fucking water was talking to you, right? I, I have to solve this bubbling or babbling brook because the because the woman said bubbling brook um bubbles and babbling brook a small tribute to Doug's court wait a second come on what do you got only video here i want all urban dictionary babbling brook i don't want that knowing what kind of drugs that means is that crack for when you know they heat it up and the fucking starts to bubble a brook's water flows and constantly traps air Bubbling brook. Bubbling, babbling brook. Anyways, the fucking answer was babbling brook. The lady said bubbling brook, and, and, and Pat Sajak was, oh, I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's not what it is. And then the other person hits it and says babbling brook, right? So they win the fucking puzzle. And, you know, Wheel of Fortune has always been fucking notorious with not only their cheap-ass fucking gifts, in the end, when they're actually going to owe you money, they come up with the most bizarre... You know, this is a saying, and it's just like, you know, you, you, all right, CR, whatever, and they got it, and you, 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 can't, you got 30 seconds, they can't fucking figure it out, and then they go, oh, the answer was Crescent Wretch uh, Toast. <laughs> Something fucking bizarre, whatever we, that's a bad example, but whenever we read it, we're like, what the fuck is that? I'll tell you what the fuck that is, Wheel of Fortune doesn't want to have to give away their 100 grand. Oh, no. Oh, look who's down here just in time for the Wheel of Fortune part. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, buddy. You going to dance class? Uh-huh. Yeah, we'll be back later. Hey, Nia, do you want to... Are you telling the Wheel of Fortune story? Yes. Oh, I can't do it now. Save it for Thursday. What? So I can be there. Are you going to be there? Yes. All right. All right, ladies. Bye. Oh, Jesus, now you guys have fucking Wheel of Fortune blue balls. All right, I'm gonna, I'll make sure I'll get I'll get Nia on there for the for the Thursday one. It was fucking ridiculous though. All right, I'll tell you if you don't if you don't fucking if you don't say anything, which I know you got. You know what? You, you know what? You guys will because whenever I fucking make fun of shit, you guys always take the clips and then you send it to the person. Like I really give a fuck about them. Rather than I'm just by myself trying to fill up a whole fucking hour. Huh? Stirring up all these fucking broads in the internet that I don't even, I don't even know their fucking names. I don't know who the fuck these people are. I'm just making fun of shit, that's all. And I stand by it! Yeah, I got all that fucking shit. You know, you can generalize a headliner, but you can't generalize a feature act. Then it's, oh my God, how could you fucking do exactly what was done to you? <laughs> I don't feel safe. Um, anyway, uh, let's plow ahead here. Got my shoulder going. That's going, you know, fuck this. Let's just get to the goddamn story. Let's get, I'm not going to try to fucking stretch it anymore. I was going to, I was going to tell the wheel of fortune story and she just fucked that whole thing over. Didn't she? Yeah, she did. You know what is great about my daughter though? She fucking loves, uh, she's kind of a car guy. Like she likes riding in my truck and, uh, you know, and in, in my uh, in my daily driver, she's always like, I want to ride Dada's car. And you sit over here and I sit here, okay? That's a big thing, okay? And, of course, she has me sitting in the passenger seat. And she thinks because now that she knows how to ride a tricycle, that she knows how to drive a car. That's her big thing. You know, that and trying to delay going to bed. I, I want brush teeth. Sweetheart, you already brushed your teeth. I, I need brush teeth again. It's It hurts. It's stuck. Point at her teeth or something. And then when you finally get her in a crib, she's like, okay, tomorrow we're going to watch Puppy Dog Pal and have smoothie. Okay? Dada, okay? <laughs> it's like, okay. Okay, buddy. 
He's planning it all out. You might have to check with your mother. All right, international holiday overeating. All right, here we go. Hi, you pie bacon ginger. You know, I tried a, 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 a pumpkin pie. I got a great recipe for it. I, although it said leave it in there 35, 40 minutes. I would have gone 45 minutes. I kind of had to stick it back in. <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, or that's what he said, right? Is that what I'm supposed to say there? Um, hi, you pie baking ginger. Uh, been listening to your podcast for years and finally caught my first live show in Berlin last January. Uh, first time running to you too. Okay. We may not celebrate Thanksgiving in Greece, but we do try to kill ourselves by eating a lot every Easter Sunday. Oh, there we go. Although I would love to hear Giannis Papas tell me how Greek Easter Thanksgiving has nothing on Greek Easter. <laughs> That's why I love following him. He's always talking about how everything that Greeks do. I guess they're Easter Sunday. But no matter how good their Easter Sunday is, to have to go to that 14-hour mass that they have to... I, one of my best friends growing up was 100% Greek. And he, and he would just sit there. Like, they had like a room you, had to, you go out and you take a break from as they go on and on. I think they killed Jesus again in like real time during Greek Easter, something like that. Anyways, although the Christmas period always involves a lot of eating too, Easter Sunday presents a tougher challenge since we have to sit through two heavy meals in a period of less than 15 hours. The challenge is even harder for those who may have been fasting before that for as long as 40 days during Lent. Uh, the first meal is to be had after midnight. That's actually really dangerous to come off a fast and then chow down like that, isn't it? Uh, typically right after returning from church and involves... All right, the first meal is to be had after midnight, typically right after returning from church and involves... Oh, he put a capital letter in here to help me out. Maga Ritsta? Is that an I? Magarista? A soup made mainly of lamb entrails. Oh, boy. Can't believe I'm missing out on that. Greek chitlins. Um, but since that's a bit of an acquired taste, there is some. there is usually some other type of meats too. Salads and dressing. Uh, salads and eggs. Dessert is optional. Now, when cooking guts, entrails, I know they boil them. But isn't the shit still in the water? Do you then take the guts out and then hose it off? Anyway, the second heavier and usually much longer in duration uh, meal starts around midday. It may go on for several hours. The centerpiece is the Obelias, O-V-E-L, capital L-I-A-S. He's trying to help me out. Obelias, lamb or young goat roasted on a spit. But there is a ton of other meats, salads and desserts, since family and friends who visit all bring some of their own. The feast can go on for hours, and there is always leftovers for Easter Monday when the whole thing is repeated, thankfully at a smaller scale. Greetings from Greece and go fuck yourself. I got to get—I do a gig over there. I'm not going that weekend, though. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I got to look up how to cook. How to cook entrails. Bring a large pan of water to a boil and add the diced meat and radish. Wait. Wait, wait. How to properly... Cook chitlins. Let's try this. Oh my god, this just makes me fucking gag. Chitlins or pork intestines are a favorite among southern families. No, they 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 were oppressed and they got the worst part of the pig. That's what it is. Traditionally, they are prepared during the holiday, but deep freezing makes them available year round. Oh boy. Be sure to wash any surface in your hands thoroughly with a bleach solution to avoid contamination while handling raw chitlins. Chitlins are very good and are allowed in moderation under some popular low-carb diets. Be certain to pass the vinegar and hot sauce. Enjoy. 
Okay, soak the chitlins in cold water throughout the cleaning stage. Each chitlin should be examined and run under cold water. All foreign materials, gross, should be removed and discarded. Chitlins should retain some fat. So be careful to leave some on after each chit. No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, boy. You know what's hilarious? You notice when, like, white people appropriate black culture, they kind of leave chitlins behind. (laughs) Jesus Christ. All right. Girlfriend considering spending Christmas with her ex. Oh, there's an easy one. I didn't have to read this one. That's a fucking big see you later, sweetheart. You go do that. And uh, be sure you slip and fall onto his cock when you've had too much spiked eggnog. All right? All right. Yo, Bill Burr, it's freezing out here. Uh, I've been dating this girl with a kid for a while now. He's five years old. We get along great. I love this girl. I love this kid. And they both love me. The kid's father is a douche. Uh, as a douchebag, and they currently trade the kid off to each other every week. Months ago, my girlfriend was ecstatic about spending every holiday together. But recently, when I asked how we were doing Christmas, she said she didn't know. Then this morning, she casually threw out the idea of sleeping at her ex's house Christmas Eve so her, him, and the kid can have one Christmas and not have the kid have to do two. I am not at all comfortable with this, and was speechless when she mentioned it. Me and my girlfriend don't have a place yet. We both live at our dad's house. Late 20s, Burr. Uh, I want us all to do Christmas at my dad's place, but she said the feelings wouldn't be right for her kid. Now she's saying her kid. Uh, I don't get it, Bill. We have plans to be together forever. Both of us agree on that. I don't want her to shack up with every... Uh, with her ex every uh, holiday just because it will confuse the kid when plenty of parents are split up and it's perfectly normal for them to have two Christmases. I don't want this to become a thing. Christmas is all about traditions, and I want uh, us to build one together. How do I express this to her without seeming like I'm worried about it? Well, you are worried about it. I want her to know I trust her, but at the same time, it's weird, right? Her sharing a magical Christmas morning with her ex and not the man she's with now? It fucking hurts. Well, there you go. I would take the fucking out of there and just tell her that it... it uh, you just need her to explain this to you. And you need her to listen to you and hear how it's making you feel. And then you guys have to talk it out and you got to figure it out. Um, that's what I would say. That's 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 basically what I would do. Um, I didn't understand all the shit that was involved in there. You got the kid there. Um, I don't know, but the guy's a douchebag. Is he going to tr- at least try to bang his ex while she's there? Um, I would think if you have a kid, there's a lot of guilt when you go through a divorce. It might be something like that. It could be anywhere from uh, she's slowly getting back to this with this douche to uh, she feels guilty. I don't know, but you need to sit down and talk it out with her. That's what I would do. And just say what you're feeling without getting mad and without saying fuck. Okay? Which is really hard for a guy because you're not allowed to cry. See, a woman could just sit down. How do you think that makes me feel? And then you'd feel fucking horrible and then that would be it. You know? But you can't be like, you know, I'm down and I had a guy over there with his fucking dick next to the mistletoe. What the fuck am I doing? You know, and then, why are you being so mean? You become the mean person. So it's a very delicate, delicate thing. It's like the end of a Tom Cruise or a Will Smith movie, you know, where they got to do I cut the red wire? Do I cut the blue wire? I don't know what to do here. Right. I'll walk away slowly from the explosion. You know, it's that type of shit. Um, But I got to be honest with you. I think she anticipated that you would not be comfortable with it by the way she did it just kind of casually went from like, yeah, we're going to fucking hang together to like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking I'm just going to kind of fucking yank it out of that. Yeah. Uh, you guys need to have a talk about that one. Because what does that mean? Is this starting this tradition that, you know, they're going to put together like 
just sit down and just say, listen, um, the rela- that relationship failed. Okay? It's a failure. Why would you go back to a failure? You know, you can't do that. Just sit down and tell her what you're thinking without saying fuck or getting mad. And just tell her in the end, all right, just to let you know, this is this is really hurting hurting my feelings. Why would you say that? Because that's what I'm feeling, and you do what you're feeling and say what you're feeling, and I'm trying to be more evolved as a male and tell you what I'm feeling. Um, not saying you can't go. You're just ripping my heart out. Merry Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Should I buy my crush a Christmas present? No! Creepy. They don't know that you're fucking crushing on them. Um, All right. Hey, old Billy Freckles. Big fan of your show and a long-time listener. I have a little dilemma with the lady. I have a crush on a girl that I have known for three years now. Uh, She is a wonderful person, but we work together. I was thinking of giving her a Christmas present to show her that I'm into her. After hashtag me too, I'm a little scared, as as you should be. Um, and I don't know what to get. Well, don't get her what, what that fucking lunatic at the morning show would get those chicks. I bought you a dildo. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you and the lovely Nia could give me some advice slash suggestions if it's a good idea. And if so, what would be a good div- gift? Thank you and go fuck yourself. Oh, look it. Look it. Come on. It's time for... That's me. And I'm off this melody from somebody else. All right. Um, oh, let's see. What would I do? Uh, that's very different. Does she know that on any level that you like her? Um, you've been crushing on her for a while now. I I think you just uh, you you gotta you gotta move your conversation past just being friends at work. You got to start. I don't. I mean, I don't know how this works in today's age. I mean, you, day and age. I, I think you got to start hitting on her. You know. I mean, I know that there's a lot of hairy leg women out there that resent that. You know. Maybe if they shaved their legs, it would happen more often, and they wouldn't be so upset about it. Oh my god, it's like so annoying when like a guy likes you. So fucking it. That's not the kind of attention that we're talking about. Shut up. Oh, God, that fucking bitch moaning and complaining. Um, I want you to initiate it, but not initiate, initiate it. I want you to be confident and strong, but I still want to feel safe and fucking in control. You want everything, right? That's is that, what you're, is that what you're fucking saying? You want the whole thing to go exactly how you want it to go, is basically what you're saying. This is how nuts women are. They routinely write articles, can women have it all? That's how fucking nuts and selfish they are. No, you can't have it all. There's always a sacrifice that's made. Okay? How many fucking times do you dumb broads got to ask that fucking question? No, you, you can, can I become a mom and it won't hurt my career? No. <laughs> if you want to have a kid and you don't want to hurt your career, it's going to hurt you as a parent. You have to make fucking sacrifices. And so does the guy. Fucking dopes. Can we really have it all? I don't know, but God knows you're going to try. Um, should I buy my crush a Christmas present? I would not. I wouldn't. I, You know, I would somehow get it. I mean, I don't know. It's been three fucking years at some point. I mean, you, you got to fucking tell her how you feel. And then ask her out. Yeah. Because what you're going to do is if you ask her out, she says yes. And then you guys are dating this time next year. The level of Christmas present that you're going to have to buy because you already bought her a certain level present when you guys weren't even in a relationship, you know, and she's going to be reading all these articles. Can women really have it all? (laughs) Can I have four kids and also work 80 hours a week and everybody's happy? No. What a fucking dumb question. Um. Yeah, that's what I would do. I, I think rather than buy her a gift, I think you need to verbally communicate on some level that you're interested in taking her out on a date. All right? Rather than coming out of nowhere with no no uh, conversation to that effect. 
and just show up with like a clattering. I think that would be a little weird. All right, time for advice. It's, oh, my God, time for advice. This person just did the layup. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to fuck it. I'm going to have to play it again. You know, we, it's time for advice. I'm sorry. With your host, Billy Burr. It was a layup. Was I? I mean, what was I supposed to do? All right. Hello, Billy the Sober Dad. I love I love that title. Uh-uh. I don't enjoy it at night, but I do love it. All right. I'm a big fan of yours from Portugal, and I need your advice. All right. I started... Oh, Lisbon. Are you from Lisbon? I started college two years ago, and I'm not doing great. Oh, guess what? I can relate. Um, I used to be in the top of my class, and now I've flunked a bunch of subjects. Well, I, no, I never did that. I sucked in high school and continued the tradition in college. Uh, I'm in college for mechanical engineering thanks to my love for physics and math. I started writing a book, and it's been hard to do both things and stay motivated for college. I'm also trying to convince my parents to buy me a drum kit since I can't afford it out of my own pocket. Uh, well, you got, better get your grades better before that, or get the drum kit before your grades come out. I want to learn the drums, write my book, and finish college. How do I find motivation and time for everything? Oh, look at this guy. He wants it all. Uh, thanks for the podcast. You've cheered me, cheered up my Mondays and Thursdays. You're a dear fan. I can't say the name. Uh, P.S. It's okay if you can't pronounce my name. Most Americans fail at that. Uh, wow, Oliveria. Oliveira. Um, that sounds like the wrestler that loses every week. Jose Estrada. Um, okay. All right, sir. Well, thank you so much for the kind words. It's cool that you want to learn drums. It's cool that you want to write a book, but your priority right now is finishing college. And if you're not going to drop out, you're just going to prolong this thing, which is going to get in the way of you eventually finishing your book and your drums. Your parents are probably helping you out with college. Uh, you just have to prioritize things. All right. The priority every day is you get your schoolwork done first. Okay. And then you figure out what's your priority, writing this book or drums. Okay. Then maybe writing the book is second in line. And then the drums is how you blow off steam. That is how I would do it. All right. Um, I wouldn't try to convince my parents to buy me a drum kit either if I wasn't doing well in school. So I think uh, you got that creative thing where you got a little bit of ADD and you just need to, uh, you know, if you just let it ping pong in your head, it's, you're still going to be confused. This is how it works for me. I have to like make a list every day and just prioritize the things that need to be done. And I just knock them out and, uh, having ADD is a great fucking thing. It gives you fucking energy or I don't, it just has you, you can do a lot of shit. All right. And, um, couple of adjustments like a list because then you can get all add uh, or, or fucking ocd about the fucking list um and i like checking shit off because it makes me feel like i'm getting stuff done so i would just prioritize your schoolwork get that done first get your grades up um then i would write your book and then i play your drums that's how i would do it personally and not to mention you can also you can also buy a pretty cheap drum kit. You could find a cheap one, you know, then your parents can't hold it over your head. You know, that's just, that's my own I- advice. But uh, it seems to me like you're going to, but I think you're going to do really well in life because you're not doing well in school and you're writing a book and you're also interested in music. Um, it seems like you're going to have a very passionate, like you're going to follow your passions in life, which is great. And the fact that you can actually handle uh, you, you love physics and math, but you can also write a book and you're into drums. You're a very well-rounded person. You just got to dial up the studying a little bit. And I think you should be fine. All right, buddy. Good luck to you. And uh, I hope you get that drum kit. All right. Overrated, underrated. Underrated. Being prepared. Always having napkins and toilet paper slash clothes in your car. <laughs> Sorry. Butchered the punchline there. Underrated, being prepared, always having napkins and toilet paper slash clothes in your car. Wow. All right. I don't even want to know what that's about. Uh, overrated, stockpiling guns and shit. 
You can only use one, right? I don't know. That's exactly what I thought. You got all of those fucking guns. You can only shoot two at a time. And you know, how accurate is that? Um, and then half of those guns, if you emptied the clip, you'd be deaf for the rest of your life. But the zombies would be dead. I don't know. I have a weird thing with guns. I absolutely fucking like... I like guns the way I like cars. I like the older ones. I like... The, like a Glock to me is just like, you know, when they started rounding off every four-door sedan. Um, let me see here. Classic guns. Classic firearms. Jesus Christ. First tipsy L's, now classic firearms. Like, somebody's got to be concerned here. All right. I don't like the German Luger. I'm not into that thing. Just makes me think of evil shit. Um, yeah, I like a fucking revolver. Old school revolver, a 38 snub nose. I like all that shit I used to see in all the fucking cop shows. Um, whenever they had an evil person, they always had the, uh, so they always had uh, one of those Lugers. Wow, look at those fucking World War II rifles. Or reissues of them. I thought I'd get some fucking images here. Come on, man. Where the fuck are Okay, let's, let's go images. Images here. Come on, you cunt. He has the worst internet ever. Three classic guns that ought to be... I don't like those three musketeer ones. I'm not talking... Oh, yeah. Like, look at that dirty, hairy fucking 44 Magnum. Before they were like silver, when they were like black with the wooden handle, those are fucking cool. Yeah, I like a six, the old revolver, six-shooter revolver. I mean, that thing is just fucking, I don't I, I, this might be the American coming out of me, but that's just fucking beautiful. A gun inspired by classic Western TV shows of the 1950s that were dominating the family room of nearly every home in America. The Ruger single six has gone on to become stuff of legend. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's just a fucking gorgeous gun. Look at that. Fucking beautiful. Yeah. Am I going to buy this thing? Can I just buy this? Is this America? Can I just fucking click on here? What's your background? Uh, I'm working the ice house uh, maybe sometime this month. All right. You, you seem pretty good to me. But we're only giving you five bullets for this six shooter, just so we know. You know, see what you do. You know, you not you don't shoot anybody the first month. We'll give you we'll give you that last bullet. Um, yeah, I like that, and I like those old Winchester rifles. Let me see here, Winchester rifle. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's just the one right there. That every fucking badass in every cowboy movie I ever saw. Let me see how much this 150, 150th anniversary. Jesus Christ, two thousand nineteen dollars. Add to the cart. I could just buy this. I can just buy this. Wait a minute. This is fucking insane. I mean, I feel like as an American, you have to have one of those hanging over your fireplace, right? I said, get out of my... The fuck out of here, man. Um, 150th anniversary model, eight, 1873 polished blue lev lever, lever action rifle. 44-40 Winchester. Is that 44 over 40, fucking over and under, whatever the fuck you guys say? That's a fucking beautiful gun. All right, let me look up to my last one. My Mount Rushmore of guns. Okay, 38 snub nose. All right. You know what? I just realized I don't like that. I just like the name. Uh, come on. Come on. 38 caliber pistol. Let's see what this thing looks like. I shot a five shot 38 one time. Oh, that was a, every detective had that fucking gun. I like it with the longer barrel. 
Yeah, I like a revolver, man. They're fucking cool looking. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's a three fifty seven Magnum. Yeah, I think anything that like Charles Bronson or Clint Eastwood had when I was growing up, I like. Woo! That is a fucking cannon. The real top five, the real top guns, five best, three fifty seven and thirty eight caliber guns on the planet. You know what's funny is this: people argue over this the way people argue top guitarist all all. You know, of all time. There's no fucking way the snub nose nineteen seventy eight nickel plated fucking is the best fucking gun out there. Um all right, so there you go. I I actually I, I'm a big fan of guns. I'm scared shitless of them though, because I didn't grow up around them, so I'm not comfortable with them. But uh I think Glocks and all the new shit is all boring as hell. But the old school ones, the old school fucking rifles and the uh the old school fucking revolvers, those fucking cannons. <laughs> I think those are the shit. Um, all right. That is the podcast, everybody. This Thursday, you will hear the end of the Wheel of Fortune story where I, I was really offended by what my wife said to me. And uh, it's been a long time since I made her laugh that hard because it was one of those things where she realized that what she said was fucked up, but it was just something silly. So we'll bring it. We'll bring her uh, bring her on on Thursday. It's going to be a dope best podcast. All right, tonight, what do we got? The Seattle Seahawks versus what? The Rams? Is that who's playing tonight? I have no idea. Sneaky Pete's going to get into the fucking Super Bowl. That is my call. That is my call. And he's going to be playing the Ravens. Uh, as Lamar Jackson fucking beat the fucking, uh, help beat the goddamn 49ers. Once again, once again, tearing through the NFC. All right, that's it. That's my prediction. Go fuck yourselves, and I'll check in on you on Thursday.